Hi, welcome back to Movie Review Mom. And if this is the very first time that you've seen this YouTube channel, yay, welcome, you found it. I'm so glad you're here. Be sure and subscribe and be sure and click on that little bell notification. It will let you know every time I upload new movie reviews as well as trailer reactions. And that way you'll be in the loop on all the new stuff that's coming out. My goal here at Movie Review Mom is to give you the heads up on the filmmaking quality and content in a particular film so that you can make the best decision as to whether or not you want to spend your time and money watching it and whether or not it's appropriate for your kids if you want to watch it together as a family. So today, the movie that I'm reviewing is called Weekenders. Now, this is not to be confused with the movie called The Weekenders or The Weekender. I don't know why they didn't just pick a different name. <laughs> but anyway, this is kind of a dramedy. It premiered on February 12th, right before Valentine's Day, in an attempt to be kind of a date night type of a movie. And it is now available on video on demand. And by the way, if you haven't tried Amazon Prime, I have a free 30-day trial coupon that you can use to check it out. Now, we've been in this pandemic for almost a year, so you probably have Prime by now, or at the very least, Netflix, right? I mean, those two companies have been the big winners of the pandemic as we've been forced to stay inside and quarantine and watch a lot of movies. <laughs> anyway, click down below in my description and that's where you can get that link if you want to check it out. You can watch tons of free movies there and then you can also purchase or rent videos. All right, so let's get started and dive right in. The movie is rated R. It's an hour and 16 minutes long and the movie review mom grade I'm giving it is a B. And I'll explain why. Let me give you an overview in a quick nutshell. I'll point out things I liked and didn't like, as well as offer tips for parents. I'll point out themes that are worth talking about and even give you some recommendations for other movies that I think that you're going to like if you like this one. All right. So in a nutshell, Emmy Award winner Eric Bloomquist is the writer, director, and one of the stars of this romantic comedy. A bunch of 20-somethings will think this movie is really cool and that the people are really awesome and that you would want to hang out with them. So for me, though, I was really grateful that I'm not single anymore. <laughs> The story features four singles in their 20s who end up sharing an Airbnb house due to a scheduling mix-up. They're not all supposed to be there at the same time. They bring baggage, both physical, you know, real baggage, luggage, as well as emotional. And as they look at what kind of connections they really value. So have you ever felt an instant connection with someone, like an instant romantic connection with someone? Well, that's the heart of this movie. And I definitely have felt that as well. And I'm happy to say I felt that with my husband the first time I saw him. <laughs> anyway, you feel that in this movie. And that's one thing that I think the movie does really well. So let me point out some of the other things that I really liked about the movie. It's a very small cast. And I really like small ensembles just because you get more time to get to know all of the characters. So this cast includes Peyton Michelle Edwards, Eric Bloomquist, as I mentioned, Ead Barisha, Maggie McMeans, Rudd Anderson, and Jeffrey Fryer. I don't think that I had seen a lot from them before, so some of them may be very familiar and some of them will be brand new to you. Airbnb is kind of another character in the movie and gets a big shout out because the movie takes place in this home that's being rented out through Airbnb. So I actually used to be a super host. I reached the status of super host when I was renting out one of our houses. It's a really great company that allows people to earn extra income by renting out their house. It could be their personal house or a room in their house or a second home. And it's also a great company that allows people to 
find accommodations that are often cheaper than a hotel and certainly have more amenities than a hotel. Like if your whole family's coming and you want a full kitchen or you want toys for kids to play with, you know, if you rent a house that has a kid's bedroom or something like that. Anyway, I think it's a great company. Watching the characters interact with one another is kind of a study in body language. And I think that these actors did a pretty good job. You could read on their faces and read in their body what they were feeling and what they were thinking even. And so I thought that that was really great. The characters play this really interesting game called Paranoia, and I had never seen it before. It's a drinking game and I don't drink alcohol, but I think it'd be kind of fun to play with, you know, just any non-alcoholic beverage as well. Although I'm sure the paranoia is heightened once you get a little booze in your belly. The banter and the dialogue among the characters seemed actually real, realistic. That's really important when it is dialogue heavy. And in this case, these conversations felt like they were really just sort of coming out of people's mouths. It didn't feel like the actors were acting. And that's one of my big pet peeves. The conversations felt very natural. You feel the pain of what it's like to be with someone when you wish you were with someone else. And I really liked that we were able to feel that. There are a lot of awkward conversations that make you feel uncomfortable. And that's a good thing in this story. The main characters really are just these four people. Although, as I mentioned, there are a few other people. One being Harper, the protagonist's father. And you just see him on screen a couple of times, but you can sense that they have a very playful, respectful relationship. And I, as a mom, I always really like that. There were a few things that I didn't like. And first of all, the movie includes some things that I really hate in real life. And so I don't like watching them in movies. And that is one night stands and players. So you see some of that. And as I mentioned earlier, you get to see what are the values and what are the connections that these characters value. So I've read some reviews where people said, oh, these people just seem like really fun people I'd like to hang out with, but they make some choices that I don't in my life. And so I would, as a mom, want to put my arm around them and say, you know, don't be doing that. (laughs) There are two girls and I felt like they looked a lot alike. And Obviously, there are two completely different people. They do look different, but at a quick glance, I was like, hey, wait, which one was that? So just in casting, I would have cast a girl with a different hair color or something like that. And even the guys, you know, everybody's a brunette, for example, and they all kind of look generic 20-somethings. And so I might have cast more diversity in that regard. So let me give you some tips for parents. As I mentioned, there's profanity and even some crude language where I was like, huh, you know, coming out of a girl's mouth, I was just like, come on. There's lots of alcohol, the drinking game, and then other beer that people are drinking every day. Kids are going to be completely bored. And so I don't recommend this for family viewing for those reasons. There's also sex of talk. And then you see two unmarried couples just going at it. You you can't get a lot of close-ups. There's just lots of rolling around and some sound effects and that kind of thing. There are some themes that I think are definite fodder for conversation if you watch this with friends. For example, love, romance, true love, And how do you know if you're with the right person or the wrong person? Connection, honesty, integrity, uh, and being really true to yourself as well. I always write down funny lines and interesting lines, and I include them in my written review at moviereviewmom.com. So you can run over there and check those out, but I'll share one of them with you right now. This is a line spoken by Harper, and she's played by Peyton Michelle Edwards. And she says, it's safer to date people you don't actually want in your life. And I thought, wow, what does she mean by that? That's really interesting. I dated people that I wanted to marry. I mean, people that I would consider marrying. But I thought it was interesting because you watch her interact with two different guys. One of them, she's sort of involved with romantically. And so there are certain expectations. And then there's this total stranger. And 
even though there's a little bit of chemistry, she is able to be more of herself because she feels like she's already taken. Not to give you a spoiler, because this isn't really a total spoiler, but I know that when I hang out, back when I was single, when I would hang out with guys that I wasn't feeling romantically attracted to, it was so much easier to talk to them and hang out with them, right? Then when you have a complete crush on someone and then you get tongue tied and you're nervous. And so I think that that's a really interesting dynamic. And again, I thought that the movie actually illustrated that really well. All right, before we go, let me give you a recommendation for another movie that instantly popped in my head as I was watching this. Now they're very different, but they have some elements that I thought were interesting that are the same. So the movie is an older movie from the 80s and it's called The Big Chill. This movie is a great movie to do a character study and to look at people's motivations and values as they interact with people, as they have preconceived notions, as they communicate and all of that. So because of those similarities, it reminded me of this movie. All right, that is it for my review. I hope that if you watch this movie, you enjoy it and certainly learn something from it and be inspired by it and that you consider it time well spent. Thank you for all of you for subscribing to my growing channel and especially for those of you who are going over to Patreon to support me there. I really appreciate it. All right, that's it for today. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Bye for now. Did you catch that? I said weekend because the movie's called Weekenders. Gotcha.